Hello everyone and welcome to this special forum which is entitled Acts of Magis at the forefront of a pandemic. The special forum is co-sponsored or co-organized by university, the University Research Council and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering. We are going to present to you um, experts in their own field, professors from the Loyola schools who have carved a name for themselves because of what they have done in society to respond to the needs. They're not just armchair researchers, they're also passionate individuals that want to do whatever it is for the common good. So this is the special forum is our way of telling our public that there is something that, not just that there's something that we're doing, but that we can harvest something positive from what is negative in our society. So I'd like to welcome you to this and I hope that you will get to go home after the presentations, taking away with you a lot more hope and courage as we face the turmoils in our society. So welcome again and enjoy the presentations. Thank you. Rina Estuar has served the Ateneo de Manila University for 27 years, with humble beginnings as a computer education teacher at the Ateneo High School in 1991. Conscious of the role of science and technology in addressing the nation's most pressing concerns in 2007, she redefined research at the Ateneo Center for Computing Competency and Research, formerly Ateneo Java Wireless Competency and Research, towards ICT solutions for nation building. She is a full professor at the Ateneo de Manila University and the executive director of the Ateneo Center for Computing Competency <coughs> and Research, or ACER, formerly known as the Ateneo Java Wireless Competency Center, where spin-off products such as Bluer and Togon.ph were born. In this laboratory, she has developed a research culture that has provided the students real-world exposure to problems related to disaster and health. Embracing her roots in St. Teresa's College, where women leaders are guided to let their light shine, and carrying on the Athenaea tradition of being a woman for others, she has inspired her students to code with a heart, to do more, to be more, and to serve more. In 2015, Rina led a team of researchers to develop a nationwide participatory disaster monitoring platform called eBayanihan. In 2016, realizing that disaster surveillance monitoring should include health surveillance monitoring, she led the proposal to develop a disease surveillance monitoring platform for the country. Today, we are honored to have with us our 2019 Towns Awardee for Science and Technology, Dr. Rina Estuar. Let us listen. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, welcome to Acts of Magis, Athenians at the forefront of a pandemic. My name is Chris Castillo from the Student and Administrative Services Cluster, and I will serve as your moderator for today's session. Uh, Acts of Magis will come to you every Friday this month of May at 4 o'clock. And uh, we are live on two platforms. You can view us on the Ateneo Facebook account, but we are also on a Google Meet platform right now where questions may be forwarded and which uh, will be answered towards the latter part of our session. We'd like to acknowledge all of our, our watchers this afternoon in a sense, no? especially the, the Ateneo community who is with us, the Loyola Schools community, and also our partners in, in external groups from such as CHED, the OST, and the like. Um, just some ground rules before I introduce our, our guest for this afternoon. We will be entertaining, getting questions from the Google Meet platform and we have a team that is curating the questions just to make sure that all the relevant questions, all the interesting questions will be, will be shared later on in this, uh, towards the end of the session. Uh, but we are sort of limited to maybe about uh, five to six questions. But then since this, this session, uh, questions rather, 
But since this session is being recorded, uh, we will see um, which among the other questions could be answered at a later time. So uh, without further ado, I like, we'd like to, to have on board on your screens, Doc Rina. Hi, Doc Rina. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? How are you, ma'am? I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, without telling us your actual address, where where are you located right now? Okay. Um, I'm in one of the highest uh, clusters of COVID nineteen. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's yeah. Okay. In, yeah. Oh, well, it's good to see that you're you're, you're doing well, all right? And I think there's a, a healthy stock of tissue behind you. Oh. Yeah. Let me move that. Let me move that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, well, well, we all have our stocks of what we need, no, and, and it's good. But again, it's good for that, that you're doing fine. Um, so, well, as as we had mentioned earlier, Doc Rina will be talking to us about well, uh, one of their works that have definitely been relevant this time of COVID. No, uh, we thank you in advance for doing this, and I'm sure there's there's a team behind this as well. All right, so to our audience, again, uh, for the next about 30 minutes, uh, we'll be hearing from Doc Rina, the stories behind the project, uh, where it is right now. All right, and then again, if you have questions, please forward it to the GMeet platform. So only those who are in the GMeet platform can forward the questions, all right? And then later on, we'll be talking more about it. So I'll turn the floor over now to Doc Rina. Okay. Um, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone, um, to the Board of Trustees, Father Presidents, uh, our Vice Presidents, um, Administrators, Special Guests, my colleagues, the media, my former students, uh, members of St. Teresa's, uh, guests from the Department of Health, Department of Science and Technology, uh, very warm afternoon to everyone. Okay, we'll just wait for uh, Doc Rina to be back uh, on our platform with her presentation. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the... oh, you're back. There you go. Back. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. It all began with uh, our experience since 2012 in developing platforms for eHealth. Uh, we realized that there is difficulty in disease monitoring because there is lack in real-time health information and there is sparse application of localized disease model tree. Sometime in 2015, in different conversations, uh, we discussed the possibility of developing a disease surveillance platform that focuses on syndromic surveillance. Uh, and so, together with uh, some colleagues from IBM, ASMPH, and DOH, we conceptualized uh, an offshoot of the SPEED project, and we entitled it FASTER. The objective was really to develop specialized predictive models to characterize the speed and location of disease outbreaks. We were uh, uh, required to develop initially uh, disease, localized disease models for, for dengue, measles, and typhoid, um, which will address uh, health emergencies uh, using a STEM, which is a, a, a spatial temporal epidemiological modeler created by IBM. The second objective was to determine the feasibility of not just using uh, cases from reported cases from hospitals, but also to include. Uh, different data sources, uh, different health information from different data sources, including electronic medical records, social media, weather data, among many. And the third was really not just to 
develop the platform and produce research out of it, but really to institutionalize this platform to the Department of Health. Our initial proposed benefits included the development of mo a modeling tool, which could be integrated in an existing surveillance system, and second, to generate uh, uh, public health research during health emergencies, particularly epidemiological modeling. And so when the project was approved in 2016, we began by studying how to develop disease models using STEM. This is the original uh, framework and concept of STEM. In 2015, we said, maybe we can develop a platform that will put in data from SPEED, which is the uh, disease surveillance platform during extreme emergencies. This is SMS-based. And then also include data from PIDSR, or the Philippine Integrated Disease Surveillance and Response System. We also wanted to include data from the EFHSIS, or the Electronic Field Health Service Information System, as well as the Epidemic Surveillance and Response System. And then we said, because we wanted to add more, can we include data from electronic medical records? Can we include data from social media and develop a disease, pre disease prediction model, uh, which, will be, which will serve as a dashboard and provide visualization? And so there were several uh, groups that uh, were, uh, were gathered together. Uh, so the Social Computing Lab, which uh, focuses on social media analytics and social computing, the Ateneo Java Wireless Competency Center, where we have been developing uh, health platforms, ASMPH for its expertise in epidemiology, and of course, IBM. At the center of it was the Department of Health, and the intention was really to serve the following bureaus. On the right side, you will see the updated framework from 2015 to 2016. So it has been uh, better defined that we have BOH health systems that will be included in the platform in several electronic medical record platforms as its initial test bed. And then from the online environment, we will be including uh, social media, um, blogs and news together with environmental factors, climate, to output three things. First is the spatiotemporal spread of the disease. Second is to determine the population at risk. And third, to detect the early onset of outbreaks. The following year was focused on developing the visualization tool from a local machine to the web. And we also conducted training, series of trainings already from the central, DOH Central and also Region 6. Sometime that year, uh, we conducted a training to the Epi Bureau uh, because of the measles outbreak in NCR. And um, we used data sets from, uh, given to us, provided to us by the Epi Bureau for the initial uh, measles model. Aside from uh, compartmental modeling, we realized that uh, we could also develop different other, other models aside from the ordinary differential equation model. And so we tested our platform and developed uh, projection models in, in different kinds. We also included infodemiology uh, wherein we use social media data uh, and correlated with cases to, to see whether there is relevance in listening to social media in relation to outbreak. So reports like uh, there, uh, there are several reports of coughing or several reports of uh, difficulty in breathing in an area, maybe an indicator of uh, an outbreak. And so we did some studies uh, and, and, and our studies found out that uh, there are correlations between uh, reports uh, of the public and social media in relation to reported cases. Updating the framework in 2017, we included the different types of disease modelings already in the platform, uh, aside from STEM. And you will see the different uh, plat uh, tools that were used to model uh, the disease. We also added the uh, 
syndromic surveillance modeling and the syndromic surveillance collection tool, uh, and developed a web interface and a mobile interface. And so this is uh, pre-COVID Pastor, okay, where we use them to develop the model, incorporate it in the web-based platform, and then uh, develop a dashboard for visualization, including predictions and maps. Because it was an iterative process, we went back and forth to the Department of Health and to Region 6, and we realized that the platform will not work on its own if it's not connected to existing systems. And so we said, let's connect it to electronic medical records and make sure that the reports are also access or, or the platform is also accessible on the ground. And so we developed different mobile applications that will feed into FASTER, including EMR, including uh, EpiTracker. And in, on its third year, on the year of institutionalization, we began training KMITs uh, to, to, for the turnover of the platform, as well as training with the Epidemiology Bureau and continued our pilot testing in Region 6. During our pilot testing in Region 6, specifically with the municipal health offices, we realized that we really needed to develop a separate platform to report uh, cases in, in households. And so we developed what is now called TANOD COVID. Uh, so it's an SMS-based platform where you can report symptoms and it will be uh, transmitted to a dashboard where health workers can do some, some verification and those that are verified are sent to the, the FASTER platform. Early January, when the news about COVID uh, was, uh, was uh, spreading, uh, I looked at the FASTER platform and uh, sent an email to PCHRD saying, maybe this is something that we can use. Um, because it collects data on symptoms and maybe that could be that could serve as a, an indicator that there is a possible outbreak of a particular disease in an area. These were the actual screenshots that I sent to PCHRD at that time. And so after several meetings, um, sometime in March before the before the lockdown, uh, we we were able to write a proposal and submit it to PCHRD and form the group called Faster Than COVID-19. It's a platform, uh, which means that it has to be managed by several people. Uh, and so for the platform to, to use data from the ground and to make sure that the data is transformed into uh, information that can be used for decision making, uh, we formed the following groups. We had the data science team, the disease modeling team, the data warehouse team, the systems development team, the data manager team, and experts from public health. The diagram that you see on the right side is the actual diagram that we have now for faster than COVID-19. We get data from different sources, including the Epi Bureau COVID system, the data collect system of the Department of Health, TANOD COVID, which is our self-screening app, and other data sources in relation to security, social, and economic data. It goes through a standard process of data cleaning, and it is fed into a warehouse for standardizing all the variables. There is a middle layer where we store the data for um, publishing it in the public facing website. We also use the same data source when we develop the following. So we have a, 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 the platform contains case statistics, the platform contains a LGU risk framework, the platform contains epidemiological classification and contact tracing. The platform also includes projections on health capacity. And this platform form is specifically designed for LGUs. So we have a public facing site, which is the DOH and cough tracker. And we have the LGU facing side and the agency facing side, which is the faster platform. 
So FASTER stands for Feasibility Analysis of Syndromic Surveillance Using Spatial Temporal Epidemiological Modeler for Early Detection of Diseases. It is a mouthful, but it really means it's a fast platform for decision making. How does data become information for informed decision making? So this uh, slide just shows you that I've embedded data science in the, in the research methods. We usually call, uh, we usually define a pipeline when we do uh, data extraction, data cleaning, data processing, modeling, and visualization. But it's not far from any methods of research where you define a research problem, you ideate and define the method, identify your data sources, identify input parameters to the model, develop the model, and validate the model. But we realize that it's not just a one-way process, it's an iterative process. And from our experience in FASTER, it is a daily iterative process. Let me begin by presenting to you the different components of FASTER. I will not claim to be a mathematician because I am not, okay? but uh, allow me to explain to you the FASTER COVID mathematical model. We assume in our model that there are six compartments that the population or an individual will only be placed in one of these compartments. We begin with S, which means the susceptible population, and then the exposed, which means that they are infected but not yet infectious. And then we have the infectious asymptomatic, which means that the symptoms are not manifesting but they are infectious. Infectious symptomatic, which means that the symptoms are manifesting. And then we have the confirmed case, which we assume in our model is not infectious anymore because they have been confirmed positive and they are already managed. Uh, they are in the hospital or in health facilities or in strict home quarantine being treated. Okay. And last is the recovered compartment. So, we extract data from the COVID EB system, uh, data collect, TANOD COVID. We get security data. We also get economic data, and we also get social data. And in the pipeline of data science, the first step is data cleaning. And we'd like to thank, of course, Thinking Machines for assisting us in data cleaning. So data cleaning is the hardest part, actually, of data science because you can't feed garbage into your model. And so there's a process called data cleaning where we adjust, uh, uh, we adjust the columns if they are not uh, presented in the proper format. Um, we remove uh, identifiers. Uh, we also um, uh, decide on which parameters to use depending on the input that's needed by the model. The next step is coding the actual model. So I'm showing you some of the scripts that uh, we use in, uh, in uh, writing a code for the COVID model. And then after we create the model and we feed the data into the model, um, there are some parameter estimations that are done. Some of the data sources of the data that we get are from literature. Um, some are from the Epi Bureau data set, and some are fitted using algorithms such as simulated annealing. In our model, we look at the health indicator as one of the indicators for decision making. We assume that there are three types of interventions in our model. First is the individual intervention where we assume that every one of us uh, maintain uh, our masks, uh, wearing masks, using hand sanitizers, and using personal protective equipment and social distancing. So this is assumed constant over time and for a long period of time. Another intervention is the community intervention or the non-pharmaceutical intervention where we look at quarantine. Uh, specifically, we look at the start date of the quarantine, the end date of the quarantine. There are now several types of quarantine um, and the number of population going out. So 
beta zero is the transmission. Lambda is our quarantine variable. And gamma is the number percentage of population going out. The last intervention is the health intervention, where we now define it as testing, isolating, treating, tracing, and quarantine. And the parameter that we use is delta S for this one. And the goal of the model is to provide scenarios where there is a reduction in transmission of COVID-19 and also to flatten the curve. I will now show you some screenshots of the actual platform that is being used by our government agencies and by LGUs. So the first thing that you will see when you go inside the platform would be the number of cases that are distributed uh, to asymptomatic, to mild, severe, critical, recovered, and deaths. There's also a demographic distribution by age and by sex. It also provides um, a pie chart on the comorbidity and also a view of the number of cases by chart or by table, by numbers, per, per region, per province, and per municipality. We also provide our LGUs with what we call the LGU classification, or risk classification, wherein um, we use uh, case doubling time to determine uh, the the classification of an LGU. So it essentially means that if the, the number of cases double every three days, it means that the, it is the, the rate of transmission is high versus if it doubles every 30 days. There are two uh, areas that we look at when we classify an LGU or a, a particular site. First is the case doubling time, and second would be the critical care utilization rate. So it just means the availability of mechanical ventilators, ICU beds. So it could be that a particular uh, location only has one case, but if that location does not have uh, uh, IC, a hospital or ICU bed or mechanical ventilator, it will still be in acceleration phase. So this model is what we call now casting. It looks at data from the past until the most recent one, which is today. Um, and so this is adjusted every day, depending on the data that comes in or that is fed in, in the model. We also provide a visualization of, uh, a map visualization of the classification. Pastor also provides a simulation platform for our users. So it's very difficult to make decisions when you can't have scenarios. And so we developed it in such a way that the user can select scenarios based on the health interventions I presented earlier and see um, the, at the, the peak of the curve depending on what they want to look at. So whether it's confirmed cases or recovered cases or number of deaths or its distribution to mild, severe, and critical. And then you can compare it if you've adjusted the health capacity or if you've adjusted the date of uh, ECQ, or if you've relaxed the ECQ to let out a percentage uh, of people of the pop from the population. We also provide the same uh, visualization only in map form so that the user can actually see uh, its status compared to the other, uh, other locations beside it. The challenges that we have encountered, so it has only been one month. Since we, uh, since we revived the platform and since we revived the team. And the first challenge really is understanding the mystery behind COVID-19 and how to beat it. It is a work in progress and it is a global problem. So first, at the data level, there is challenge in consistency in data because there is challenge in data encoding from the ground. There's challenge in data integrity because we have to make sure that there, is no, there are no duplicates, uh, that we are consistent with what is seen publicly. There's also a challenge in model building because the model here is not a fixed model. It is an engine which has to be um, running 24-7. And therefore, 
we have to feed new data that comes in at the end of the day, uh, clean it, and then put it in the model, run it, do parameter estimation, and then validate it, and then visualize it the following day for our users. So this is a daily task that we do uh, for, for the Department of Health and for our LGUs. We also know that the that the COVID, that COVID is very dynamic, and so we realize we're realizing that there's not just one model; there should be several models looking at COVID nineteen in different angles, and looking at new variables that are more important for what is currently needed by the decision makers. And lastly, for the first challenge, would be new systems. So there are a lot of systems out there, and the challenge now is how to connect all the systems to make sure that there's only one dashboard for our decision makers. The second challenge is to move on from curves to missing links. And so for the past maybe three weeks, the focus was really on projections, on case projections, the peak of the curve, when will we flatten the curve, uh, when do we lift the ECQ, uh, when do we extend the ECQ. But, but more recently, the emphasis is now in looking for the missing links. So we have, uh, we're focusing on testing, isolating, and treating, but we have to focus now more on contact tracing, which is finding the links to those who are confirmed and quarantine them and treat them. So for the next few weeks, we will be developing our model for contact tracing, which we will include in FASTER. The third challenge which where we find more, most of our heart in, is behind the data, the model, and the systems are human beings. There's really a challenge in prioritizing which indicator you want to focus on, challenge in data encoding to make sure that the data at the national level is similar, is the same as the data at the local level. There's very much uh, challenge in data interpretation challenge in rolling out to 17 LGUs before May 15, challenge in automating, and challenge because at some point we ask ourselves, life must go on. However, there is a need for analytics for decision making that is grounded in science. There's a need for an engine that cannot be turned off, okay, to adjust to everyday feedback, to synchronize with real data, to provide baseline numbers for simulated scenarios. And from my conversations with Asek Mani, he always asks, where are we now? Where will we be in the future? How fast are you moving towards where you want to go? And what adjustments can be made along the way to beat COVID-19? And if FASTER can do that, then FASTER is the platform for COVID-19 for the Philippines. How do we measure magis? How do we measure hope? I don't think we can, but this is what we can do. The ability to accept, ability to adjust, ability to adapt, ability to do more, be more, serve more, save most. And so I'd like to thank everyone who said yes last March 23, and I welcome other people to join us in this one big fight against COVID-19. This is our platform. This is our small contribution to the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc Rina. No, I, I'm sure the, our listeners, our audience right now are clapping. All right, uh, in their own homes, unfortunately, we can't really hear all of them now. So, on behalf of them, hearts to you and your team. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, at, at this point, ayan, meron po mga nagsasabing clap, 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 all right now. Uh, and also on our face, I was monitoring our Facebook uh, feed. Now, there are some people, some fans, I would think, no, sending you hearts and love and and all of that no so but really uh, there's amazing work to to do uh, there's something very helpful definitely during this time no? um so at this point i'd like to tell the audience particularly the ones on on the gmeet platform that you can 
field your questions through the chat. All right. And may we request again everyone to please note that Sana, your 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 microphones are on mute so that we could focus on the, the presentation of, of Doc Rina. All right. So we're we're monitoring the chats, but we're also getting some questions from other sources. And so maybe I'll I'll start with some of those that you were able to get uh, as you were presenting. Okay. Well, here's one. Um well, how do you determine the accuracy and precision of the faster model? All right. Uh, of course, this is clearly a lot of data. Clearly, the implications of the data are, are very significant. But then, you know, how do we check for the accuracy and precision? Is this reliable? Yeah, so that, that has always been a, a challenge, no? And then that is a challenge to all modelers, actually. It's not just uh, the faster model that wherein people ask, uh, how accurate is the model? Um, and so the first, uh, I guess, uh, point of accuracy would be the source of the data. Um, and so we use uh, the Epi Bureau data for our data set. Um, and it is highly recommended, of course, by the Department of Health that we all, all modelers use one data source. Okay. Okay. Um, and then second, because the data, because in big data, really the challenge is is that the data is sparse. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the data. And, and so some of the data that we cannot, that cannot be computed are, are uh, gathered from the literature. So for example, the, the transmission rate, we got it from the Wuhan data. Uh, okay. uh, and, then, and then for some of the data that cannot be found in literature and cannot be found in the actual data set, there are several algorithms, uh, computing algorithms that can be used. And so for our, and from, from three years ago, we've been using uh, simulated annealing, um, which is a, 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 an algorithm that tries to fit the, the raw data, the real data from the projected data. And so this is something that we do every night. Uh, because we're using um, ordinary differential equation modeling, uh, which means that we assume that there is a homogeneous mix of the population. We, we don't just have one COVID model for the entire country. We have one model for every LGU. And those are the models that we uh, adjust every night uh, before it becomes visualized the following day. And so, so uh, those are some of the factors that uh, we put in so that uh, we, do, we have a good fit of the real data and the uh, data that is projected by the faster model. Okay, ma'am. Uh, for for the lay people, no, these are the types of, of data that we hear about in the news or we'd see in some Facebook posts, but then what we typically receive is already processed data, no? Uh, something that's yes. more digestible, I guess, no, for the yes. for the lay person. But uh, you mentioned it earlier and uh, the role of data science or right? data science is, is is sort of a lofty term all right okay. maybe you can also educate us a little more what is the role exactly of data science what is data science um so uh, i don't think it's a new concept i think it's just because we have better technologies now that we've connected the different components of research where okay. you have a problem that you want to solve and then you know that you need to get data and because there's a lot of platforms that provide big data and there's more challenge in extracting it in processing it and analyzing it no and so for for maybe a, a, a simpler version of data science is we call it a pipeline where you have a process to get the data and then clean it feed it into a model that you want to use for prediction for classification for projection and then then even high school students actually use data science already because the mm -hmm. tools out there are very uh, very uh, age young age friendly they're not complex no uh, because uh, most of the algorithms are now black box no they don't have to understand how the engine works they just need to know how to drive okay we'll get a, a live question from one of our uh participants this uh this afternoon ma'am minela alarcon all right i'll just read her question 
So for the daily update, and you mentioned you do this every day, uh, for the daily update of the data for new cases, is this data only for the day? No? And how do you take into account the fact that the results of testing are typically late? No? They come days after. Okay. So well, there's several, but let's let's break it into that part only first. Yes, yes, yes. So so um, what you see in the public side are the reported cases, no? Um, mm -hmm. But in our model, we do some adjustments so that we look at the date onset date or the date recovered, depending yeah. on what we want to run. So we look at different parameters, not just the date uh, that is reported in the public side. So mm -hmm. imagine a big matrix where you have all these different columns of the data sets. Um, we don't just use the confirmed cases uh, for our model. So marami pang iba, and then we impute some of them uh, if they're not there based on literature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so related to that, um, you know, I guess this is more of a, a layman's question here, and I think we may have gotten this from the Facebook uh, platform, based on what you have right now, would you say, and I believe, let's phrase this as an opinion, Muna, at this point, uh, would you say it's safe to move from ECQ to GCQ after May 15? Okay. Um, there are a lot of things that we need to look at to make decisions like that. And um, of course, uh, we are not the ones who make the decisions. We just provide mm -hmm. a platform uh, to help people make those decisions. That's but right. uh, what are the different factors that uh, uh, we look at when we make decisions? So it's first and foremost is the health indicator, which is uh, what the faster platform has to offer initially. There are also um, indicators for for health capacity, indicators for security economic indicators and social indicators that should be in place no, before you decide on whether you should lift the ECQ or extend it or modify it. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in the faster platform, uh, there are thousands of scenarios that can be generated to make that particular decision. And so what we're trying to do is to explain how, how the platform can be used uh, for such decision-making process. Okay. It doesn't have to be a decision for the entire country. We're localizing it. Uh, the platform is, is uh, adaptable to local, to local decision-making. Okay. How, how, there's a, another question. How has the reception been of the LGUs? So you tell them this, you give them this data. But what kind of reception do you typically get without naming the specific LGUs, I guess? Okay. Um, with the help of the Department of, uh, Depar Department of Science and Technology and PCHRD, um, they were the first ones who did the rollout. So it was a, a test run around two weeks ago when we presented faster and Tanod COVID, which is a self-screening app, uh, to the regional directors of DOST. And it was through the help of DOST that uh, they themselves presented to the LGUs. Um, okay. As we speak, we are now preparing a presentation for all of the LGUs to include not only use of faster but use of uh, the data collection system of uh, Epi Bureau, as well as uh, all the other uh, contact tracing apps that can be used by the LGU. So, parang isang uh, training na siya na mangyayari mm -hmm. sa iba't ibang LG starting tomorrow po. I see. Well, good luck on that, ma'am. So, uh, another thing on your plate. All right. On, on, on the, I, I, what I typically enjoy about the way you do your work no, is while it's very, in a sense, hardcore science, a lot of data, um, you always get to put in a, a human touch to it. No? Um, seeing the data, uh, looking at the data that you have, uh, ano yung dating nito sa inyo as a person and to your team? No? Parang, okay, you, you see things, things speaking, you see things about death and so on and so forth. 
uh, how are you dealing with the, the, the human implications of these data and how is your team also coping with that? Yeah, thank you for asking. No? Uh, it's very rare that people ask about us. It's always about the platform. That's why I ended with a slide saying there are human beings behind all yes, these yes, things. No? So a day in the life of a member of, a faster, of the FASTER project. So we yeah. start, of course, our morning, but making sure that the, that the data that we see is the same as the data that is presented by, in the public sites. Okay. And then the day moves on with uh, several services that we do for the different agencies in the Department of Health because we also produce reports for them, uh, which they need no, for their projections, for their procurement, and for their decision-making internal to the Department of Health. Half of that day, uh, is also a meeting with the different groups. So we have uh, different uh, groups in the FASTER team. And then we, we make sure that we are uh, on track with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then at, uh, at night, okay, we now look at the new data and extract it and then update the model, make sure that it, the data is fit, and then we do the visualization. We meet every day. We used to meet every day for one hour, and then um, it lessened when we when the engine started running. Okay, and now we only meet once a week. But in, in all of those meetings, it's always kamusta kayo? How are you? And uh, there's always a, an opportunity to to take a break and rest if you need to. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because this is uh, uh, more than it's more than industry work. Uh, a lot of us are academics, and I think it's even beyond industry work what we're doing, um, because there's no rest. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I would tell my team, "Kailangan doble tayo, triple tayo," because 24 hours yan, Once we start launching this, and I see that moving forward, we will need more people on board, um, because it's like everyone's going to use it. And everyone yes. will request for more things, no? Uh, and, and so we have that. We have the human side, of course, that's never forgotten. Um, there are uh, opportunities to communicate privately with me or with the other members if they are okay. Um, yeah. And we also celebrate once in a while. Uh, mm. Online, of course. Online. Yeah. Yes. But how you can also invite us in one of those celebratory moments, no? Yeah. Wala kaming pahinga. Wala pahinga. Sabado linggo. Wala. Yeah. Oh no. Parang people tend to think um, work from home is easier, but I think the the common pulse right now is it's actually more difficult, no? Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be more difficult. And it's not just us, ah. Uh, the government agencies that we work for are also the same. Wala rin pahinga. So yes, everyone's yeah. doing their own contribution to fight COVID. Yeah. Yes. COVID and be be before we move on again, a, a big thank you. A big thank you to all to all to all people who are doing these types of work. No. Now, um, we'll, we'll get back to the the, the stories, perhaps the more human side, ma'am. But then people are wondering. Okay, it's almost been two months since the the lockdown, uh, sorry, the, the general quarantine and all of those. No? But have we flattened the curve? Or if not, how near or far are we from flattening the curve? Yeah, common question din yan. Um, ang, ang problem in answering that is that it depends on the scenario that you've chosen. No? So yeah, you will say that you've flattened the curve if, for example, you've chosen a particular type of quarantine or if you've measured your testing capacity for today. Uh, so you may have flattened the curve last month, but if you've uh, relaxed in your testing or or uh, released people and then transmission increased, then may rise again. No? So it's very, very dynamic. And uh, even in um, most of the models for other countries, ganun din naman. So it's, it's not that you've flattened it and that's it. You've probably flattened it for a time, but depending on the new behavior of the disease and how it affects people, it may rise again. That's why walang tulog. Diba? Laging babantayan yung data kasi yung data nga yung 
tinitingnan ng decision makers on their next move. So, pwedeng, yeah. pwedeng mag-lift ng ECQ, pero pag tumaas yung transmission rate, tapos kulang yung hospitals, balik ulit natin. ba? Diba? Ganun lang. Uh, pagka bumaba ulit, sige na ulit. Sino yung papalabasin? Again, depende. So, marami talagang um, uh, choices, maraming variables na tinitingnan. And I yeah. guess the contribution of fat is providing the simulation uh, for to project those numbers. Para mm-hmm. is kahit papano, it's not, it may not be as accurate as we want it to be. It may not be as exact. But at least merong data. Merong data na yes. makikita. Yeah. Uh-huh. All the, 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 the effort here, I guess, no, to, to laymanize all of this is based on data and not just on power not just on the the, the whim or a, a hunch of someone you know, but really eventually on hard data you no know? um a, a related question ma'am and this really I, I guess this is related to uh uh to some news that was released i think a couple of hours ago uh where the mayors will be meeting tomorrow to talk about whether the the ecq should be extended uh to a month Far, farther, I think, no. Um, but based on what you have seen, based on what data you have, does it make sense for LGUs to apply different types of quarantine, or will it really have to be one big thing, once one kind of quarantine for Metro Manila? For Metro Manila. Yes. Ah, okay. So is is the question? I guess is can the different LGUs, the different cities? actually have different types of quarantine or should it just really be one for the whole of NCR? Oh, kasi nga maraming factors, no? Pero pag titingnan for, mo lang, for example, magkakadikit-dikit kasi yung cities, no? Pag nag yes. ka ng quarantine sa isa at yung tao na yun nagtatrabaho sa ibang city, ano, paano siya papasok doon? So, merong mga ganun na uh, kailangan i-consider. Our model uh, assumes homogeneous mix, so parang sarado siya. Ibig sabihin, mm-hmm. mahahawa ka lang within your, within your locality. Hindi na, hindi na niya na may measure kung lumabas ka at pumunta ka sa ibang lugar. Yes. Um, and so that's the limitation of the model. But if the question is, can uh, we localize the non-pharmaceutical intervention? In theory, yeah. so in theory, the non-pharmaceutical, yes, in practice, okay. Oh, in practice, it, it's really a difficult decision to make. Um, because okay. there are a lot of implications on whether mm-hmm. you extend it or whether you lift it, whether it's for just one city or whether for two cities. Marami talagang kailangan tingnan. Um, so again nga, ang pinoprovide namin ay hindi yung sagot. Okay? Ang pinoprovide namin ay visualization tool para makita mm-hmm. nila anong itsura natin today, ano kayang itsura natin bukas, how are we mm-hmm. going to affect our our neighbors and, and yes. that's what we try to give them and we are helping them interpret it also yes um you know ma'am uh how, how does how can people contribute i guess the, the public no how can the public contribute to this work no uh and then before you answer that i'd like to invite our audience you know, those who are watching this live right now and those who will cash it on later uh, to actually share this because this gives you a peek of what you see on TV. Typically, we just see a graph and then the newscaster says this and that. No? But right now, what we are seeing through the work of, of Doc Rina and her team is really the, the, the nitty gritty behind all those graphs, all those uh, tidbits that we receive already. So it again, thank you on behalf of the, the lay people. All right. Uh, but how can we help? How can the public help you with what you do? Okay, homeliner. <laughs> Yun siya sabi natin, stay at home. Stay at All home. right. Okay, that's one. No? Second is if you have to go out, yun na nga, yung individual intervention should remain. Um, okay. I still, see, I still see people who are, refuse to wear masks um, um, when I go out. The rare occasion that I go out. <laughs> Okay, um, and so that's the first thing that we should do. That is our own contribution, our small contribution. And if, if everyone does it, it will help um, uh, reduce the transmission, okay, of the mm. disease. Okay. 
Okay? Second is if you have the symptoms, I guess wag matakot i-report. Okay? So if you okay. feel that you have the symptoms, uh, consult your barangay health worker, uh, consult your birds, um, consult, uh, use contact tracing apps that will be recommended by the government, and report. Um, uh, our, 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 our health workers will, uh, will, will go to you and uh, maybe bring you to a testing facility and then do the proper treatment if you are um, confirmed and also um, help in the contact tracing. No? So, you know, nga, you remember there's an incubation period. Lumabas ka, na-expose ka, naging infectious ka, pero hindi mo pa alam. So, after some time, meron ka na ng sakit, and you need hmm. to know saan ka nagpunta, sino yung nakausap mo, yon. So, it's very important that we use a contact tracing app uh, yeah. very soon kasi yun na yung next phase, no? Um, when we look for the missing links. Okay. Um, and then, of course, a lot of uh, prayer, I guess. Um, for, ano, for those who um, have time, uh, especially in the provinces, I think our academic institutions are uh, already planning to help in the data encoding, no? Kasi isa rin yun sa challenge, no? Okay. The, model, the model cannot be robust if, uh, if uh, we don't have uh, sufficient data, okay? And, and the data from the ground, matagal siya bago dumating, no? Sa, sa national, kasi nga, you're taking care of people, there's no time to encode, when it, mm -hmm. it is encoded, it has to be still verified and validated because you don't want yes. duplicate reports. So there's a whole, uh, there's a whole dyna may dynamics yung pag uh, pag encode ng data at para umabot siya dun sa model. So isa rin yun sa hinihingi namin yung mga volunteers. The OSC is going to provide scholars to help oh, wow. in, in the data encoding and in the training. Uh, so. Pwede po kayong mag-email kung gusto niyong tumulong sa training. Uh, mm -hmm. We will provide um, training materials. And maybe if you are uh, in touch or working with your LGU, pwede rin po kayong mag-approach sa amin para po tulungan namin kayo i-connect uh, yung system dun sa LGU. Okay. Ma'am, you, you mentioned uh, an email. Uh, what, what, how can they reach you? through? What's the email address? Uh, faster covid19 at gmail.com okay we'll we'll make sure to put that on the facebook platform at least now so that the those who'd like to help or might have some questions faster.covid at gmail.com faster faster COVID at uh, gmail.com yes actually i was thinking kanina no um mag dun sa live audience natin ngayon who can give the full name of faster and we'll give them a prize pwede, pwede. <laughs> Pwede, no? <laughs> no, but again, Ma'am Re Dr. Rina, no, thank you very much for, for your work. Uh, God bless you and your team. No, Do take care. Uh, as you had shared with us, it's, it's a 24-7 type of work no? uh, that you can choose not to do, but that you have chosen no, to do. Truly uh, an act of magis. No? Uh, any last invitations, Dr. Rina? Um, I would like to thank the people who trusted me in managing this project and in managing the team. But I think the heroes behind Faster is not me, but my team. So I'd like to thank the team again for saying yes and staying with me for the next 12 months. <laughs> All right. Uh, for, for those who... Yes, maraming salamat po sa team ni Doc Rina. No? Uh, for those who are going to watch this later on there's one slide there that showed i guess most of the current team members no so we get an idea who these people are and then and, and again thank you thank you uh to our audience thank you for joining us this afternoon uh this is acts of hope Athenians at the forefront of a pandemic and next friday as well also at 4 p.m we'll be having another guest to share his work uh Dr. Toby Dairit will be with us, okay? And again, all, all the sessions here are being recorded and are also being streamed live on the Ateneo Facebook account so that you may share it with those who you think could benefit from it, no? 
And taking off from what Ma'am Rina mentioned, the invitation to us, home liners, I, I like the term home liner, you know, is actually being a responsible citizen. You know, parang, simply put, uh, responsible citizenship. Do your part. You know, do your part. Let's do our part as they, our scientists, our frontliners are doing theirs. You know. So with that, again, thank you, Doc Rina. Thank you to the FASTER team. I hope you can see the comments. There are a lot of uh, well wishes, a lot of thanks happening there. And uh, we'll keep in touch. Maraming salamat. So again, this is Chris Castillo from the Leola Schools. And we'd like to thank everyone for joining us. We'd like to thank all our fellow organizers. Uh, and we'll see you again next week. In the meantime, God bless you. Take care. <laughs>